Hello, everybody. Welcome to the IACIC Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping items for you. Note that your micro and camera phone are off, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Also note as well that if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them by using the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also note that we have additional StriveScan sessions on the website, so if you have interest in another institution, you can go out there at any time and sign up as needed. Be aware as well that we are recording the session and we'll post those once ready to strivescan.com slash Illinois. With those items behind us, we'll turn it to our first presenter from Rose Hallman Institute of Technology. Good evening, my name is Dexter Jordan, I am Associate Director of Admissions here at Rose Holman Institute of Technology located in Terre Haute, Indiana. Very glad to have everyone here with us today and hope you're having a wonderful and profitable school year. I want to show you some few things about Rose Holman. We have a little video here, but I'm going to skip that. I'm sorry to say, just due to the time frame that we have to work with. And uh, we're going to, it actually is a very nice video and I do really enjoy it. But unfortunately, with the time frame, we don't have no time to see it and get all the wonderful information about our school. Rose Holman Institute of Technology is located in Terre Haute, Indiana. Uh, currently, about 2,200 undergraduate students are there enrolled at the school. We have 18 different uh, degrees in the STEM areas. Our average class size would be 20 students a class. We have a 13 to 1 student faculty ratio. Here are our major areas of study, and I always show this slide to let everyone know this is what we offer. Uh, so if you're interested in STEM, engineering, math, science, uh, we're a wonderful place to take a look at to see if we can find a major or a discipline that will fit your educational needs. Some application deadline, our applications are up and running currently. We're on a common app. We also have our own application. Two dates to keep in mind, November the 1st is our early action application deadline, and February 1st will be the regular decision application deadline. Uh, it is important to point out that neither one of these deadlines uh, are, are the type that are going to hold you to your admissions decision. You still have until May 1st before making an admission decision, and we'll be very happy to help you with that process by giving you more information about the school. And also you have an opportunity to talk to faculty and current students. Here are our required documents for admission. Of course, things that we need, Common App, uh, Rose Home and Application, uh, your high school transcripts, uh, no grade point average minimum. We wanna see what kind of classes you're taking and how well you're doing in those courses. So honors courses, AP classes uh, are always uh, something that we look at, IB courses as well. This year, as with last year, test scores are optional, so you can turn in your ACT or SAT test scores if you wish, but they are optional. You can go without them and complete your application. Then, of course, a letter of recommendation from the high school. Uh, it can come from a teacher, school counselor, coach, a club sponsor, uh, et cetera, as long as it comes from the high school. The classes that we need are on the right hand side of the, the screen, four years of English, four years of math, two years of the social sciences and important courses are biology, chemistry, or physics. We need a year each of those. Some important uh, points to point out as far as Rose Holman is concerned, uh, we look for all A's and B's in the classes that you take. And the important thing now is going to be your recommendation. Make sure someone that knows you and likes you. Rose Holman is a teaching institution. We have a very wonderful reputation. All of our classes are taught by faculty. Uh, the majority of them have their PhD. We have an open door policy that gives our students an opportunity to talk to faculty, get the information they need to be successful in their chosen disciplines. Our faculty do research with companies and also on their own, and they're dedicated to your education and they will always be available to you for support and also to help you learn your chosen areas of study. We have a wonderful career services area who uh, they are ranked nationally as well. Uh, each student will have a personal career advisor. We have access to paid internships and co-ops and research opportunities all across the nation. Uh, a lot of companies come to Rose Home, and we are uh, very fortunate and, and we uh, purposely uh, pursued companies and our graduates have the uh, advantage of talking to all these companies and being employed by them at the end of their stay at Rose Home. 
And you can see there the class of 2020 averaged $76,000 uh, per year for their starting salary. We have a lot of sports clubs, activities, over 81 different clubs and sports are offered at Rose Holman. And we also have uh, a wonderful music program, both vocal and instrumental, drama club. We've got sports, intramural and intercollegiate athletic sports. Uh, 20 NCAA Division III teams. We have clubs and organizations available, Greek chapters, competition teams, affinity clubs, and the most popular one now are, would be the Makers Club, where you can work on your own individual projects. If you're a sophomore, junior, or even a freshman, we have summer programs available to you. Project Select for freshmen and sophomores, creation crates for sophomores and juniors, and Operation Catapult for uh, students who are going into their junior and senior years in high school. If you'd like to get more information, additional information from the school or from myself, here's my contact information. That's Jordan, Dexter Jordan, that's J-O-R-D-A-N at rose-homan.edu. And you see the Office of Admissions uh, tagline there and also we're on social media. So feel free to uh, contact us if you have any additional questions. Dexter, thanks so much. We're on to our next presenter from the University of Indianapolis. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Carrie Freed. I am the Senior Admissions Counselor for Diversity Recruitment here at the University. Um, the University of Indianapolis is located just 10 minutes south of downtown Indianapolis, so we're in a nice, large um, public uh, public area. Um, but one thing that's really nice about us is that we're both a little bit residential, but a little bit closer to downtown. So students are really feeling like campus is really traditional brick and mortar campus, um, but they also have that luxury of having the whole access to a large metropolitan city. Um, our mascot is the Greyhound. So that's Grady right there. He's our live mascot. He was actually a rescued um, uh, old racing dog, which is really cool. We are a private arts liberal university University. So that means that we um, participate in all kinds of things in terms of your major. So our top ones are things like nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, psychology, business and engineering. Um, but we have a little bit of everything in between 100 plus majors to choose from uh, 25 plus master's programs and some doctoral programs as well. Uh, we have approximately 4000 students at the undergraduate level. So that makes it for a really nice, comfortable campus. You get that nice, easy, um, you know, close one-on-one -on -one faculty participation, um, but you still don't know everyone that's there. So it's a nice medium-sized school. We're also Division II NAA, uh, NCAA sports. So that means that we have some pretty awesome programs in terms of competitive athletics, um, everything from football to lacrosse, um, and we're also adding club sports this year. So for those of you who don't know, uh, club sports are kind of one level down from a, a traditional athletic program. You still go to practice, you still compete with other schools, um, but it's not quite the level of uh, rigor that being a student athlete would make you. Um, and like I said, we're only 10 minutes south of downtown Indianapolis. So that means our job connections are vast. Um, anything from working at a zoo to working at a, a, a corporate office, um, in a hospital, setting, in a therapy setting, anything in between, you can find yourself there. Uh, we're also a sports city, so that means if you're interested in things like sports management, sports information, um, you might want to be a broadcaster someday, or you want to uh, run the halftime show at a Colts game, um, we actually have access to those programs and to those places. Let's see here. So how do you apply? Um, applying is super easy. Our application is open right now on the U app and as well as on our regular application. It's free all the time on our website. Um, we just need your transcript. We are not requiring SAT or ACT for this school year or for upcoming school year. So we are test optional. So that means that we'd really like to see your score, but it's not required for you to send it in to us. Um, we actually will really look at your GPA first and foremost. Um, students who are coming in with some pretty competitive scholarships come in with at least a 3.0, um, though that's about a $16,000 scholarship just off your GPA, and they go up from there. So definitely please um, apply. We even have uh, scholarships for those who are in the 2.5 to 2.7 range as well. All right. I 
think that's about it for my time. Thank you so much. We're on to our next presenter from IUPUI. My name is Heather Hawker, and I am a senior admissions counselor with IUPUI. So IUPUI is Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. Um, so what does that mean? Um, we are located in downtown Indianapolis. Um, all of our students will be Jaguars. We, uh, you will be an IUPUI alumni, but what makes it unique is after you graduate, you will either get your degree from IU or Purdue, depending on your academic major. We have 550 academic programs, 16 degree granting schools, 20,000 undergrad students. Uh, so we are a larger university. These are our 16 degree granting schools. Some of our more notable ones are ones that um, I tend to talk to students a lot about would be our Kelly School of Business, our Purdue School of Engineering and Technology. Um, our, we are the first school of informatics and computing. We also have the IU School of Medicine on our campus with five hospitals. Uh, we have a large school of nursing, as well as our Purdue School of Science. So as I mentioned, we are located right in downtown Indianapolis. So we are walking distance from professional sports teams, museums, uh, nightlife, the Indianapolis Zoo. You'll see our um, IUPUI Campus Center. I love, one thing I love about IUPUI is you have tons of green space. Um, you feel like you're on a college campus, but you're in a major metropolitan city. Indianapolis is the 16th largest city. Um, so our students love to check out uh, you know, the Panda Express, the Chick-fil-A, a Starbucks, a Caribou, all in our campus center. We have a natatorium uh, where the Olympic swim trials are held every year. Uh, so there's always a lot to do on our campus. You will truly never be bored. Uh, we have over 500 clubs and organizations, whether that is athletic-based, uh, community service, based on your major. Uh, we have a great multicultural center that runs amazing events on our campus. We have our campus recreation center. We are division one, go Jets. We compete in the Horizon League. And we have five residence halls that you could choose from living on our campus. However, we do not require students to live on campus. We do have some great traditions as well, um, like the regatta, which is our boat race down the canal. So how do you become a Jaguar? You, we are on the common application or you can apply through the apply IU application. We require your high school transcripts and essay, your application fee or waiver. Um, and then we are test optional as you've heard before. So we do not require test scores. It is completely up to you whether you would like to submit them for admission. And you can be direct, directly admitted to any of our 16 degree granting schools um, without test scores. So if you're applying with test scores, we usually like to see about a 2.8 GPA or higher, a um, thousand or a 19 on the SAT, um, and then obviously your essay included. Um, if you're applying without test scores, we like to see a 3.0 or higher, as well as including your essay. So our out-of-state tuition is about $32,100 per year. Um, we do have room and board a little over $10,000. Those are going to be your direct costs. Um, your books and supplies, transportation, and personal costs will not be directly charged, but um, it is something to think about. But one thing that's truly great about IUPUI is we offer a lot of scholarships. So we have the Illinois Student Excellence Award. So if you have a 3.0 GPA or higher in the state of Illinois and you are arrested, you get a reduced tuition to 14486 So it is over a $17,000 scholarship. And that's automatically given at your time of admission. We also have admission-based scholarships that you can stack on top of your Illinois Student Excellence Award. We do have an honors college that comes with a pretty hefty scholarship for students that are interested in applying to that, that are high achieving students. And then we do have competitive and diversity scholarships that students are eligible to apply to. We have a lot of opportunities for scholarships at IUPUI, so definitely chat with us if you have questions about them. We are offering both in-person tours, uh, virtual sessions, as well as individual appointments um, via Calendly. So we would love to have you on our campus. The best way to feel if IUPUI is the right choice for you is coming to visit. Um, myself, again, I'm Heather Hawker, and Jamie Newsom are located in the Chicagoland area, and we'd be happy to work with you. Thank you so much. Heather, thank you. Great job. We're on to our next presenter from DePaul University. Awesome. Thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Hello from DePaul. Ben Hatchett here, Regional Associate Director of Admission. Thanks for joining us in this little road trip through Indiana. We're making a stop now in beautiful Greencastle, Indiana, 
home of DePaul University. We're a small private liberal arts college, just 45 minutes from the Indianapolis metropolitan area, but we're definitely a rural kind of residential in location. And we have just shy of about 2000 students that make us an entirely undergraduate university. Here at DePaul, you can continue your studies in both our College of Liberal Arts, as well as our School of Music. And I'll talk a little bit more about what each of those look like for you. Let's see. There we go. Now on your screen, you can see just a few things that we're proud of. We're proud of a lot of things, obviously, but here are a couple of recent recognitions that I want to draw your attention to. Not only are we the number one liberal arts college in the state of Indiana, of Indiana, but we're also recognized as a top 50 nationwide liberal arts university. Here at DePaul, you can do a lot. We're definitely excited to be reopening our doors for study abroad opportunities. You probably guessed it, but in the last 18 months, we haven't had many students embarking on some of those amazing adventures overseas and around the globe. But in a normal year, DePaul has an amazing opportunity where about roughly 500, 600 of our students every year will go on a either a full semester study abroad experience or travel during some unique short term, winter term and May term experiences. I bring all of these things to explain why that national ranking is number three when it comes to off campus study abroad opportunities. If you're looking to join our community, as I talked a little bit earlier, there are two schools here where you can find yourself studying. The College of Liberal Arts is where a majority of our students find themselves studying. We have a wide variety of majors and minors to choose from, from 49 different majors and 56 minors. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see a quick glance at our top 10 majors listed there in popularity. What I also love about this list, though, is that it truly is always growing. So while it's just a little snapshot, there is also an opportunity for you to create your very own major as an independent interdisciplinary major. If we would have met virtually maybe four or five years ago, you would see a lot of programs that are in existence today, but you'd also find some that are new. For instance, global health, neuroscience, um, international business and entrepreneurship, and a few others, just to name a few, are programs that came about by listening to our students. Our students came to us and were interested in these fields, and we're creating a lot of these opportunities on their own as independent majors, and our faculty have come together to figure out truly what you and our students are, are looking for. So you never, you never really know what you might influence in the DePaul curriculum, and I think that says a lot about the type of community that we're all about, that when you're one of 15 on average in the classroom, the professors truly get to know you, and they wanna hear about your passions. Our student-faculty ratio is about nine to one and has a ton of variety in two schools here. If you are considering an audition-based school of music education, you'll find no better program in one of the longest-running schools of music than at DePaul. And you can see our four music degree offerings listed here on your screen. But maybe you're undecided and trying to figure out that you know music might have been a big part of your educational career or just personal journey so far, and maybe you're not ready to give up that you know, vocal background or instrumental background will know that there are tons of music-based opportunities outside of the school of music that actually exist in the College of Liberal Arts. So I know sometimes that audition-based music education could be different and maybe not what you're looking for. Know that usually about three or 400 students each and every year will not be officially part of the school of music, but certainly be doing things music-related at DePaul. One big thing that we're committed to not only is that educational access, I, I emphasized earlier just kind of the smaller, close knit community that you have. And of course, that's a big part about the DePaul education, but that global citizenship, that ability to become a leader in every sense of the world. We know you might not always um, be identifying yourself as a leader just yet. And we know that it takes many different types of characteristics and qualities to become a, a driven leader. And we believe that at DePaul, your educational experience is going to lead you to that, but also that experience that you get out of the classroom by immersing yourself in a place like DePaul. This is a truly 100% residential college environment where you'll be able to not only go to class for four to five classes a day, but then also dive into a lecture, go to a concert, a show, a performance, or check out a big game day, or just get involved in our community. We believe it's this perfect combination of all of these things, your educational access, the opportunity to travel the world or get involved on campus really makes you that overall well-rounded person ready to tackle the world after DePaul. 
here are just a few outcomes and statistics that we want to bring your attention to. One thing that we're really proud of is that 97% placement rate within six months out of graduation. We have a pretty high four-year graduation rate in comparison to the national average, and also some incredible opportunities as it pertains to education, um, law, medicine, you name it. If you're still looking for more information, we're collecting and gathering those details from the class of 2020, 2021, I should say, but here are some cool outcomes from the class of 2021 that you can kind of see here featured by graduates that have gone off into the workforce, but then also directly into graduate schools after DePaul. Last but not least in my time, we are a free application available for you on the Common App and we are open for visits. I can't wait to hopefully see you on campus. You can visit Monday through Saturday and we do have our first fall Tiger Day for seniors coming up next Monday, September 27th. Thanks for joining us tonight. Ben, thank you so much. We're on to our next presenter from Butler University. All right, good evening, everyone. I'm excited to be here with you to share a little bit more about Butler University. Um, my name is Laura Shutt and I'm an assistant director of admission. I'm also a Chicago-based regional representative for Butler. So I live here in the Chicago area. Um, I specifically work with students who attend high schools in the city of Chicago, as well as the North and Northwest suburbs. Um, in total though, there are five uh, Butler admissions counselors who work with students from Illinois. So I encourage you to find your own admissions counselor, of course, by visiting our website. Um, Butler is a private and non-religiously affiliated uh, mid-sized university um, located in the city of Indianapolis in Indiana. Um, as you can see here in this photo, um, the university is about just five miles north of the downtown area, so you can kind of see the skyline there. Um, campus is a very residential campus tucked away in a neighborhood, um, so it really gives campus um, that true, or students, that true campus feel. We have just under 4,500 undergraduate students on campus and additionally around another 500 or so grad students. Um, however, our focus is truly on that undergraduate experience. And you'll find that our size in many ways gives you that small school feel with a lot of big school opportunities. Uh, with that average class size right at 24, that student to faculty ratio of 12 to one, um, you're gonna find your classroom experience to be very student focused, very engaging. You'll get to know your professors um, and you'll get to know your classmates as well um, through lots of discussion, group projects, that type of learning experience. We do have six different academic colleges um, that make up the university, focusing on the College of Communication, Education, Liberal Arts and Sciences, uh, Pharmacy and the Health Sciences, Visual and Performing Arts, um, as well as Business. Um, for any students though that are unsure what they wanna study, one of our most popular majors, if you will, is our Exploratory Studies Program. Um, it's a great way for undecided students to do just that and really explore and learn a lot about what's available at the university. University. Um, while it's not a requirement for all of our majors, we do find about 75% of our students do complete at least one internship before they graduate. Um, many take advantage of our location right in the city um, for those internship experiences, um, but we do also have students that'll do their internship through one of our semester-based programs in Washington, D.C. or New York City, so wonderful opportunities through either of those locations. And then our students, of course, love campus and they love Indianapolis, um, but about 40% of Butler students do spend at least one semester um, studying abroad through one of our 200 plus programs in 60 different countries. So um, really exciting to return to that. Um, so Butler is a very fun, vibrant campus community. We have a program called BU Be Well um, that really serves as our foundation uh, for a very holistic Butler experience. So everything we do inside and outside of the classroom is really focused on one of the eight dimensions that make up BU Be Well, and that'll include mind and body, diversity and inclusion, meaning and purpose, um, social, sustainability, service and community, intellectual and career and <coughs> Apologies, I've been talking all day and my voice is not used to this. Um, career and life skills round up the BUB well. 
Um, so Butler is a residential campus um, with a three-year housing requirement. And we recently built two new residence halls, uh, one for first year students and one for sophomores. And they both have that suite style focus um, in terms of the living environment. We do have 130 student clubs and organizations, a very active Greek life with about 35% of students participating. And we have 20 NCAA Division I uh, college athletic teams as part of the Big East Conference. Um, one fun fact, if you're a sports fan, you do get free tickets to all the different sporting events, and that'll include men's basketball, um, which is a really big deal on campus and a lot of fun. Um, plus, there are going to be several club and intramural sports as well. And then we do also have a very active diversity center, um, which is the hub for all of our different student affinity groups, um, such as the Black Student Union, Latinx Student Union, and Gender Equity Movement, um, to, me, to name a few. Um, and then it's also the home to our Multicultural Mentors Program as well. Um, shifting gears, I do want to talk briefly about the admissions process for Butler, um, really starting with that academic profile, um, which gives you that idea of where a typical student is academically speaking, um, in terms of those that have been admitted um, in the past year. And so these numbers do reflect our middle 50% ranges. Um, the GPA is the weighted GPA, so we will take that highest GPA listed on your transcript, um, which most commonly is going to be that weighted GPA. And then keep in mind for the test scores, we are test optional. Um, so this is reflecting those um, who applied with test scores last year, um, which was about roughly 50% of our applicants. Here's a quick list of all the items that are necessary to complete your application. Um, keeping in mind that there is no application fee, so it is free to apply to Butler. And you can use the Butler app or the Common app. We have no preference. Um, so whatever is easiest for you, if you're applying to multiple schools who are also in the Common app, go ahead with that. And then you can see that we are test optional um, and we will be every year moving forward. Here are our application dates. Definitely recommend early action uh, with that November 1 deadline. You'll automatically be reviewed for academic scholarships with that. And knowing that I'm about out of time, just want to share my contact information. Please feel free to follow up um, with any questions you have. Um, thanks so much and good luck with your college search. Go Docs. Laura, thanks so much. On to our last presenter from Indiana State University. If I can, my video is now, it is stuck. Let's see if I can at least share my screen. Let's see. Hopefully everybody can see that. You see your video is coming in clear for me, so I think you're all good. Okay, you can see me as well? That's right. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, well, um, welcome. I'm Lisa Winker. I use she, her, and hers. I am the Chicago Regional Admissions Coordinator for my wonderful institution, Indiana State University. <clears throat> Established in 1865, we believe that every person deserves the opportunity to get a great education. We're all inclusive. We offer more than 100 majors and minors, over 75 graduate and professional programs, and over 70 online programs. There's literally something here for everyone. We are a mid-sized public institution with a student enrollment of just under 11,000 students. Two thirds of our classes have less than 30 students, which provides the opportunity for a lot of individualized attention with 100% um, hands on experiential learning. The academics at ISU are more than just book work. We are a research institution and a teaching college. We offer endless hands-on and research opportunities for our undergrad and graduate students. Our large honors program puts theory into practice working with our professors on research projects. So students aren't stuck waiting until grad school to have that experience to get that opportunity right from their first year. So let me talk about some of our uh, most popular and unique key programs. Our nationally ranking College of Business includes our highly rated insurance and risk management. Our most popular majors include cyber criminology and criminal justice. We have a very sought after communication sciences and disorders major, which incorporates the speech pathology. 
Um, in addition, we have engineering, engineering technology programs, um, and our aviation, education, nursing, and health and pre-professional sciences are also really fantastic, but they do require additional applications within that admissions process. Um, oh, and let me not forget, um, we have 100% job placement in packaging engineering, and also um, psychology is also a very well-known program here. So Indiana State offers um, our students opportunity um, to have outside of the classroom experiences. Our experience grant helps provide that to students for up to $3,000 of funding for either an internship or a study um, a service trip or even a study abroad um, experience. We also have a, um, a four-year graduation guarantee for students who meet eligibility requirements and who are unable to complete their degree in four years. So if you love food just as much as I do, my stomach is growling right now, there are 18 different dining locations on campus and even more options just off of the campus grounds. All incoming students are required to live on campus for their first year in one of our 14 newly renovated resident halls. Um, there are over 260 clubs and organizations, including 29 chapters of National Greek Life. Um, ISU has a lot of traditions, including our annual tandem race and uh, tricycle derby. We are Division I and part of the Missouri Valley Conference, and we are, um, also offer competitive club and um, intramural sports. So go ahead, take a quick screenshot of this slide. To me, it's one of the most important. Unconditionally admitted Illinois students will be kind of in that center area where it says interstate scholars, that price point on this chart. Um, students from Illinois with a 3.0 or higher will automatically receive the Midwest Achievement Scholarship of $2,000, which once applied really brings that price point down to about in-state cost. We offer a lot of other merit scholarships that are stackable and renewable too, and we have competitive scholarships that are really fantastic. Our President's Scholarship includes complete in-state tuition, room and board, and a stipend to study abroad. You might be wondering about our admission requirements. Well, ISU is test optional for general admission, and our application is located either on our website or um, as well as the Common App. Um, the average incoming student has a 3.29 GPA. So when you're living on campus, you're gonna be right in the middle of what we refer to as Teradice. The Haute offers a small town cozy feel with convenience as a city life. The city has a population of just over 60,000 and really everything that you could want is at your fingertips. Um, Terra Haute is settled um, along the banks of the Wabash River. It celebrates rich history and brims with cultural activities and tons of beautiful parks. Our 435-acre campus is located at the northern part of this downtown. It's contained um, in kind of a bubble within the city. Um, it's filled with tons of lush trees and an award-winning sustainable landscapes. Um, our sycamores also make an impact on the community. We have performed over one and a quarter million hours of community service. Our students really hit the ground running and easily adapt to change. Employers love that about our grads. Um, in fact, even during this pandemic, our grads enjoyed a in, enjoyed a 92% placement, and on average, they had a starting salary of $54,000 a year. I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to learn more about Indiana State University. I'd love to provide you with further personalized information, so please feel free to contact us. And so go Sycamores. Now, let's see if I can stop share. Thanks, Lisa. For all our counselors and the time we have left, we're gonna ask a couple of questions. We'll ask you to each weigh in and offer your perspectives for our prospective students. We'll ask our counselors to share their information in the order that we presented. So <clears throat> be ready when it's your turn. The first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll again, start at the top with Rose Holman Institute. The best advice I would give someone going through this college search process at this time is to actually uh, create a separate email for yourself to receive all those wonderful emails from the colleges. That way you can look at them easily and be not have them clutter up your email box. 
Um, my best advice would be to get on campus, visit the campus, even maybe the one that you really like, find out if you can stay for a camp or an overnight stay, really get out there and experience what that campus is going to feel like for yourself in real, real time. So mine follows along with that, but it's visit multiple different types of camp campuses, visit suburban, urban, rural, big, small, so you can truly get a feel and see what best fits for you. To kind of echo some of my colleagues, a lot of you are already on taking a huge, great step by joining us virtually. We've gotten all pretty creative in creating a variety of different options, whether on campus visits or virtual visits. So we love to see you in any of those platforms. So check out what all of our schools are offering, because I'm sure there's events coming that you might not realize that you could join from home or on our campuses. I would say get to know the admissions counselor that works with your high school. Um, we love hearing from students and really um, enjoy getting to know you and kind of helping guide you through that college search process. And we can really be a great advocate for you once we get to know you. Well, I would say since all my colleagues seem to have taken all the really good ones, <laughs> um, everything that they said, um, I re reiterate. But another thing would be maybe to um, possibly have a Google Doc of some kind where you're keeping track of your um, college search. Um, you can share that Google Doc with your um, parent or guardian, um, and it can contain things like contact information for your counselors, visit days, um, deadlines for scholarships, um, just links, um, and you know costs, all that kind of thing. Very good. Thanks, everyone. Our next question. What's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Again, starting at the top with Rose Hallman. The one thing that I would want students to remember about our school is that we are very proud of that number one uh, ranking in the nation for the past 23 years where we're even, uh, our chest really sticks out with pride about our students and the achievements that they have uh, had after Rose Hallman. So that's the one thing I want people to remember about the school. I would say the one thing you have to remember about UND is the fact that each of our incoming classes are at least 40% first generation college students. So if you're out there and you're the only person, the first brave person in your family to go to college to start this huge process, and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, uh, UND is definitely a place for you. We definitely have the support available from the admissions process all the way out through graduation. So for IUPUI, I would say the one thing I want you to remember is that our students are doing internships, they're getting jobs, graduating, they're getting hands-on experience by walking to downtown Indianapolis, and they're able to get this amazing degree at a very great cost because of the scholarships we offer our students. And at DePaul, I just kind of emphasize that, that community approach. We have found that, you know, 75% of our students come in, end up declaring something different in major than they applied with to our school. So it's okay to be undecided, undeclared. That's for building relationships and finding that support group in college is really gonna help you. One thing that's tough. Um, and one thing I would like for you to remember is that Butler truly provides that best of both worlds. You really do get that small liberal arts college type feel in the classroom with that great community, knowing your classmates, knowing your professors. But then on the flip side, you get that larger university feel with division one college athletics. So if you're struggling between big, small, big school, small school, you kind of get both right up wrapped into one. Well, I would say that you can come study a lot of, or come study one of our many majors and you can learn a ton, but you're not gonna pay a ton. Um, Indiana State is super reasonably priced. Oh, and I guess my video wasn't on, but I don't know what's going on with that today. <laughs> there I go, okay. Lisa, thanks so much. On to our third question. What is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? The one myth that I would like to debunk right now is the fact uh, that without test scores, uh, students think that it's easier to get into the colleges that they're applying to 
Uh, and, and the myth is that they don't have to uh, give us any information. I would say that you would have to give us more information now because without test scores, we need something to fill that void. And there's nothing about finding out what you like, what you don't like, what you can be good at to let us know more about who you are as a person. So the one myth I like to debunk is I don't have to say anything. Uh, tell us more about you. That's a really good one. Um, the myth that I would like to debunk is that um, a private school can be really expensive. Um, yes, I would argue that all of us have a pretty hefty sticker price, but um, really at any of these schools, if you just apply, you're already going to get some money off in some way, shape, or form. Um, there's lots of scholarships and free money out there that's available to a student just like you. Um, it takes a little digging, and it takes getting to know your admissions counselors so we can help you find it. I would say my uh, favorite one is when students tell me I'm not going to apply for the FAFSA because I'm not going to qualify for anything. And you don't know that until you file and you may not want to take loans and that's no problem. But I always tell students life is crazy and things change and you don't know what's going to happen. And if you do only qualify for loans, it's a lot less stressful if you've already had your FAFSA in place and you can add those to your account versus having to file and go through that process. So File the FAFSA, just go through the process, and you never know what you may qualify for and what you may or may not need to use. I'll just add to reach out or follow up with your admission counselors. We do a lot more than just waiting to read your application. And I think one of the things that really make all of our schools pretty unique is just that relationship that we get to make with you before you even make that decision. So that's kind of what we're here for. And there's never a bad time to reach out or ask questions. Hmm, this is a hard one. Um, I guess one thing that I would say, I don't know if this is a myth per se, but um, that students struggle with making that decision and feeling like they need to find the perfect school. There are going to be many schools out there that are going to be a really great fit for you. Um, so try not to struggle with that decision too much. You're going to end up where you're meant to be. Hi, this video, there it goes. I have my video button stuck today. So one of the great myths that I would like to debunk is you've heard us all talk about Indiana schools um, and a ton of people walk by my table at in-person fairs and they don't even consider um, us because we're out of state for Illinois students. So one of the, the myths would be that you were gonna be paying more at an out-of-state school. That's completely not correct. Compare all of our costs to the state, um, to the schools in the state of Illinois. And I think you're gonna find them very comparable, if not cheaper, or I hate saying cheaper, less expensive. Thank you. And thanks to all our presenters. That's gonna to conclude today's session. We wanna ask our attendees to go ahead and fill out the quick five question survey. And again, another reminder, there's more sessions. And lastly, again, go to stridescan.com slash Illinois for the recording. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.